Most people in life are looking for how do I make a life worth living in retirement worth having. When we're trying to do these things, we try to raise our children the way they should be. There's a marvelous childhood poem that my mother, I think, who is an early childhood uh, educator, was in her first stint in college and university, which was pretty amazing for the women of her age and generation and station, that literally it says, it's called Children Learn What They Live. You can look it up online, I'm sure. But the reality is if you are not preparing your children who are finishing their junior high and high school years for the truth of adulthood, that the career they pick, that the schooling they go to, that the degree they study has to provide for them a living, then you're really lying to them about the world. We can have as many financial majors, as many business majors, as many accounting majors out there in the world, but if they don't recognize that social skills and social graces and understanding how to handle their bosses with social graces is important in the world, they might just keep losing their jobs because their mouth gets ahead of them or they feel equal to them and there's always a president of a company that will want to say to you, want to bet? I own this company and you're not going to talk to me like that. There's also plenty of employees who will say the same thing. I don't want to be playing for someone who's going to harm me, who's going to rape me, who's going to watch porn all day, or who's going to steal from my company. And I've had plenty of people, and plenty of people I've heard walking down the street, not intentionally eavesdropping, they're just talking so loudly it's hard to miss it, talking about their bosses and how their bosses didn't play fair with them, or were immoral in some way, or illegal in some way, and I feel sad for them. But unfortunately, we have some of those golden concepts of rules that my father used to plaster on the back of the pantry door of he who has a gold makes the rules, which was the reminder of the fact that he was the one paying for our lives until we were of the age of majority and able to do that. And parents have a great failure on their hands if they don't teach their children in the early stages of life how to behave in different situations. Many young parents are getting pregnant for the joy of parenting, or is it to keep and maintain a husband-oriented person, to make a sugar daddy or baby daddy out of someone, which is marvelous, but please don't stand in front of me and shout at your two-year-old child because you don't understand the appropriate way to handle a child, because you failed to pick up a fucking book that's been written on based on 60 years of motherfucking research of how to handle a two-year-old versus how to handle a four-year-old, versus how to handle an eight-year-old, or a nine-year-old, or a ten-year-old, or a boy versus a girl, regardless of whether or not they turn out to be heterosexual, homosexual, whatever the hell else they decide to be, asexual, I don't even understand. But the reality is there are people like that in our land, and you've got to learn how to mature that child into a fully functioning, socially appropriate, community service-oriented individual. Do you think you can do that today, motherfuckers? Are you that dumb about how to play? Are you teaching your children to expect a handout because you're walking around the community sitting your ass on a sidewalk looking for a handout, which people will often say about me, which is a little different. You see, I accept money for my ministry, and my ministry pays for food for me and other people who need something from a pantry. But I always encourage young people to find those pantries. It's amazing how many young people are in struggle, but they don't know the food pantries exist. They don't realize that because they have a car or a bus pass, they can go to some pretty amazing churches and get some food help, which allows them to redirect their discretionary income, whatever they make in their job, towards other bills and have a little extra money left over so they can sort of enjoy their life, see a movie or two, go out to dinner once in a while. You see, it's how we learn to play in life. It's how we learn to stay in life. It's also how we learn to be in life that makes a difference. I live my life very luckily and fortunately, very differently than biological siblings. While they worked 40 plus 60 hours a week, I worked in less than 20 hours a week having a marvelous life with my family, with my late spouse or wife, and with my son who was hell on wheels most of the time, but that was not my fault. I came into his life late in life as his stepfather. I am now a marvelous step-grandfather, if there is such a thing, definitely a grandfather. And if my son chooses to claim me as his father, it would be wise of him because I provided for his life a very long time, more than his alcoholic biological father who used to beat the shit out of his mother. Now, am I telling stories out of turn? No, I'm telling a story for a girl who wanted to hear a story from me. Well, I can tell you all kinds of stories about the magic of God, but what I see most often 
And what I find most odd is how many Christians want to talk to me about Jesus, but they don't ever pull up their sleeves and say, what resources do you need today? How could I, with my humble capabilities, with my financial abilities, with my resource network of community, help you today to get out of the trouble and the struggle that you're in? We've seen lots of video interviews with interesting reporters who are hot to trot in pissing all over Trump or pissing all over Biden or pissing all over politics who don't know shit about running a country, but they do it anyway. Literally talking about the fact there are homeless problems. Yes, in a time of COVID, in a time of pandemic, in a time of downturn of an economy, people lose their jobs, they lose their money, they lose their income. But they're looking for some sort of compassion, some sort of hospitality, some sort of, well, employment opportunity. And if we don't have an employment opportunity, then we must, at the very least, start looking into how do I produce a business for me? What are my talents? What are my skill sets? What are my pet hobbies that I can turn into something that I can love and do for the good percentage of my life or for not that for the rest of my life? Am I a good chef? Am I a good cook? Am I a good house cleaner? Am I a good janitor? Am I a good hammer maker? Am I a good carpenter? Am I a good whatever? Am I a good mechanic? You see, these are the foundational skills that most people need, but we don't really need any more people in the housing industry is pretty true. But what I know about people in construction is that they can sell a house or two, or they can sell a remodel or two, and they can live for the rest of the year in two or three sales. So how we make a living is based on what we teach our children about how to handle their cash flow, as Kiyosaki talks about it with his marvelous wife. But openly, we're not going to be creating billionaires in this world. We're not going to be creating hip-hop rap stars in this world. We're not going to be creating that, but we can still teach children how to make a business that is modest enough to provide for their lives. Now, maybe it seems that my storyline has gone in some sort of full circle. I can't tell. But I'm a man who used to live his life well, enjoy his family, have Friday family days, and didn't have to hunt for my time to spend with people I loved. Because to me, time management was essential. I had clients scheduled at certain times. I had accountants, accounting things to do. I had promotional things to do. I had videos to make. I had a lot to do. I had a lot of people to deliver to different parts of the community, almost an hour away sometimes, for my son to go to a community school. And the reality was that I had to handle it all as a dad, as a father, as a husband in that household. So when some 20-year-old little shitbag wants to play up to me and ask me if I smoke or try to engage with me if I, as if I'm his little 20-year-old brother, I just want to say, walk away, motherfucker. Go find a 20-year-old to talk to because your whole approach with me is so rude. I want nothing to do with you.